Honestly, strong choices on both sides for the pre-show match, but I'm going to go with uh, Hinako and John Silver in the pre-show. While that's going on, I'm going to go ahead and do the social media thing. Let's see. Hoi. if I ran a map that I booked tonight before. Two of them are looking like real maybes here. But, you know. There we go. Now I can actually focus on the match and very nearly thinking of a call there. Hey. Makes sense that go would have the sumo driver. Didn't really play a lot of KOFs that she was in, to be totally honest, but. I know she was a fucking terror in 2K2 Unlimited match. Mm, crowd did not like that pre-show match, gotta say. Deeply unfortunate. gonna give a couple more minutes for people to start showing up um those matches usually run a little bit longer in terms of end game runtime uh which usually gives people to opportunity to jump in the chat to uh jump into the stream so the actual program is uh what they're seeing when they come in but as Good as those uh, pre-show matches have historically been, you know, a lot of them 
running right at the uh, 725 to 730 window. Uh, this one ran a little bit short. Um, anybody that has been paying attention in recent weeks, my schedule's been getting a little bit irregular. Uh, I've totally thrown out my Wednesday streams, and I should take that off of my built-in Twitch schedule as well. Uh, just because my work schedule's been getting a little bit more aggressive. Uh, last week, did a six-day work week uh, and had no desire to also be working on Sunday, uh, streaming here on Twitch. Uh, going to try to make this at least an every other week deal, uh, if not a weekly deal where possible, but we will see where that goes. Uh, let us see here. What I can do is start to queue up the first match. Coming up very soon, uh, in just two weeks, operating strictly under the assumption that this is going to be a weekly uh, endeavor. In two weeks, Blake's House 100 is going to happen. Um, if I were marginally better prepared, I'd have something planned for that, but... There's some people that have been around this stream for over two years, and they know that being prepared for some sort of occasion is not exactly my strong suit, but I'll figure out something to make that episode special. But in the meantime, I think we have stalled just enough to uh, give everybody time to get into Blake's House Arena. So we'll have everybody here get on your feet, make some noise for another edition of Blake's House Professional Wrestling. Welcome, Blake's House Wrestling fans, to another edition of Blake's House Professional Wrestling. If you were tuned in for our last program, you got to see the epic conclusion of that meteoric rise of Sean the Swashbuckler Satchwell, a man that time and time again attempted to get to the top of the mountain, only to be faced with setback after setback man that so desperately wants to be at the top of that judgment professional wrestling world well he has managed to outrun his bad luck in another division as he had called out team lake mary that truly dominant stable that has just held that blake's house wrestling title with a vice-like grip taking on one after another, after another, after another. Until he had earned himself a championship opportunity. And with that opportunity, he was able to become 
Blake's House Wrestling Heavyweight Champion, besting Josh in a singles contest just two weeks ago. But that was not the only title up for grabs on that program. The Chop Shop Tag Team Championship, another Judgment Professional Wrestling staple, not currently held by a Judgment Professional Wrestling Tag Team. Floyd Bartholomew and Baby Man of Nick's Wrestling Organization. If we want to talk about Vice Light Grips, Nick's Wrestling Organization holding both Tag Team Championships for several months has really been the story in the Tag Division. Robert Walsh and John Newton challenging for those Chop Shop Tag Team titles just two weeks ago, coming up just short. Baby Man and Bartholomew just so very prepared for that hardcore style of wrestling. That style of wrestling that Walsh and Newton, teams like The Firm, absolutely are in their element, just unable to wrestle those titles away from Baby Man and Bartholomew. Of course, the King of Fighters Television Championship up for grabs every week. This week will be no different, but Team Daytona on an absolute tear in recent weeks. Win after win after win. We'll have to see if they are able to keep that streak alive as they take on a team of very hungry Judgment Professional Wrestling competitors. Of course, Christopher Warzala, a man that has been building an impressive resume and historically on Blake's House Professional Wrestling Television, that is how you earn yourself a championship opportunity. He is on the winning streak of his life. Picking up a win last week over Zero Lopez. And it looks like he is calling out Brad Chad, but Brad Chad refusing to give him a match tonight. Brad Chad going to be going one-on-one -on -one with Warzala's wife, Christine. Christopher Warzala only going to be able to watch at ringside. Waiting for an opportunity to get into the ring with the champion himself. Of course, in addition to that, we have just a rising star not quite able to get to the top of the roster. Cinderella Prinsler taking on David last week. David picking up a victory in decisive fashion. David been hovering under the radar for the last several months. Really not clear what his aims are, what his goals are. He's not actively competing in any of the major singles divisions, not actively competing in any of the major tag team divisions, but a win just two weeks ago serves as a reminder. He is still very much a threat to whatever title he sets his sights on. But that was the last program. Let us go ahead and get into this week's show right here. You can see the opening contest of tonight's program. Matthew Knapp and John Schmidt, two elite level wrestlers, going to be going head to head. Of course, we're going to continue following Zero Lopez. He has had a rough go of it these last several months. Loss after loss after loss, but... These are losses against the best of the best. <laughs> and tonight, once again, he is going to continue to try to punch above his weight. Although, Olivia Holloway, this is really where it all started for Zero. Zero calling her out just so many months ago. And it looks like in that journey of self-discovery... Zero has once again found himself standing across the ring from Olivia Holloway. Of course, it would not be a Blake's House Professional Wrestling without the Maglo Open Challenge. And of course, what that means is competitors from all over the world, all over space and time, going to be entered in an eight-man over-the-top rope battle royal. The winner will be going on to face the People's Champion in the semi-main event. Of course, Chop Shop Tag Team successfully defended on our last program, but 
the Blake's House Wrestling Tag Team's title still very much a wide open division. And the center is picking up a significant win. Going to be taking on Sarah and Yuri this evening for a chance to gain a little bit of ground on that title opportunity. You've got to imagine if you are Nick Vidala, you want to see the centers win that match. You want the highest chance for your stable to be able to hold on to that title. Of course, there will be plenty of show left for this evening. As uh, Sean the Swashbuckler Satchwell not yet finished with Team Lake Mary. Josh just absolutely obliterated by that powder keg lariat. But sending Brandon and Jordan out this evening to take on the champion. Of course, Satchwell has his close personal friend, Colby Cole. And the two of them will be taking on Team Lake Mary in tonight's main event. But let's go ahead and get back to our opening contest of tonight's program. Matthew Knapp, Big John Schmidt, two top-tier wrestlers squaring off inside a 20 by 20 and that match... It's right now. Matthew Knapp making his way to the ring. The enigmatic competitor known as Matthew Knapp, of course. He is a man that can out-wrestle you, and we're going to be seeing that tonight as he goes head-to-head -head with John Schmidt, another pure wrestler, but Knapp has a versatile skill set, not just content with wrestling. Borrows a lot from David Clements, unorthodox style, but Big John, what you see is what you get. That is a large man looking to lift and drop his opponent to the mat. And right now, both of these men wasting no time, just shooting into the center of the ring. Knapp getting the upper hand, at least for the moment, and a machine gun-like series of chops, just blistering the chest of Big John Schmidt, and mount tackle applied, and Big John answering back, applying some leverage of his own. Both men showing exactly what they are about in the opening moments of this contest, and Neither of them giving an inch. Series of knees to the crown and Knapp barely able to escape. Lift and drop and Schmidt sent to the outside. And no, this match is not going to be confined to a 20 by 20. As I said, both of these men are absolutely wrestlers, but Knapp, oh my God, huge backdrop right onto that Matt, uh, that padding's only a couple inches thick. That is concrete right underneath that. A series of shoulder blocks as Harada's count is at 16. On a suplex attempted, blocked and reversed into a DDT. And it is difficult to say who has got the upper hand here. Just going blow for blow, both men just lifting and dropping, hold on. Arm lock applied, but a clubbing blow to the back of the head will break the hold. Back switch, but no. Nap just a half step too fast, and Kimura hold locked in. And picture perfect gut wrench suplex. Hold on, just a moment here, rolling through, cover. One, but only gets one. It is going to take more than that to keep Big John down as Mount Tackle applied and a vicious series of closed fists. Harada going to let them fight as he often does. A series of kicks to the crown for good measure and Big John looks like he's switching his strategy up a little bit but hold on just a moment here. Blizzard suplex cover two only gets two. Mount tackle and hold on, right back to those deadly kicks to the crown and John Schmidt now changing his focus, trying to keep Knapp grounded. Hold on. And again, 
I had mentioned before a couple of times, Nap, not just a pure wrestler. That pile driver, certainly a different, ooh, mount tackle attempted. STO flattens Nap. Matthew Nap out on his feet, back switch. Lift and drop. And here we go, both men just giving everything they've got. Big John, looks like he wants to give a reminder, not just to Nap, but to the audience at home, to the people in the back that have doubted him. And right now, closed fist answered back with a forearm smash. An absolutely devastating tackle and right back to the arms. Big Shote attempted, doesn't quite find its mark, but that gut wrench suplex, absolutely devastating. But an STO is your answer back, and Matthew Knapp is out on his feet. No, on instinct alone, rolling through, cover, two. Only gets two. Blizzard suplex once again, center of the ring, cover. And it's not enough to put Big John away. Both men shooting in for that mount tackle, but oh my God. Arm drag getting Nap out of harm's way. And once again, continuing to target the arms of John Schmidt, trying to take away some of that power advantage. Back switch. Hold on, just one here, backslide. You didn't see it coming, cover two. And oh my God, no. Even that is not enough to put Big John away as again, suplexed flat onto the mat is Matthew Knapp. And you know, Knapp fighting his way back to his feet and another blizzard suplex back to back to back. But John Schmidt refusing to stay down, getting a foot on that bottom rope. Mount tackle applied. Hold on, reversal. And Oh my God, absolutely monstrous deadlift suplex and Nap unable to get a shoulder off the mat. And back after a long absence, Big John Schmidt here to remind you just how good of a wrestler he truly is. I do got to say, um, if we're being totally transparent, I don't ordinarily keep track of views. I barely pay attention to uh, follows and things of that nature. But with the, uh, the Twitch hate raid situation, uh, that is a thing I am paying attention to today in ways I have never paid attention to before. So, we will uh, we'll see how we're doing. Uh, over the course of the stream, but hey, things going pretty okay so far. But uh, let us go ahead and keep this show rolling. I feel like I have to have booked this one before. There is like almost no way I haven't, but. Hmm. Maybe not recently, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. So coming up next, Cinderella Prinsler taking on Eric Kuraga Alpazar. One on one, both of these competitors. Just scratching and clawing, trying to find some sort of footing in that singles division and neither of them quite able to get that foothold they need. Both of them have an opportunity tonight to get an oh so important win on their record, but 
As is always the case, only one competitor can get their hand raised at the end of the night. Will it be the Princess of Blake's House? Will it be Kiraga Alpazar? Well, let's find out. Cinderella Princeler making her way to the ring. Tough loss last week to David Clement and Eric Alpazar in a similar position, taking a loss last week in a tag team contest against the Sinners. Both of these competitors very badly need a win any way they can get it. But only one of these two individuals are going to be able to save a losing streak tonight. And we are once again in the tail as old as time. Striking, striking going head-to-head -head with grappling. Those deadly kicks of Kiraga Alpazar. Those strikes, the very same ones that he used to be the first ever mixed martial arts champion in Blake's House Professional Wrestling. Strikes positively lethal and... So far, doing an excellent job at maintaining space, keeping Cindy away from being able to use those joint locks that she is so very fond of. Big elbow to the crown. Both competitors just taking their time. You are always one clean hit away from victory and one clean hold away from victory and already attacking the arm, but Alpazar wrestling out of that as quickly as he is able to do so and locking on a hold of his own. Cindy proving to be a little bit slippery here, protecting herself from that hold here as both of them just jockeying for position in the opening moments of this match. Jab just too quick. Cindy unable to get started. Going for that Shote. Big forearm smash. Slipping that jab. But you got to watch the feet of Hiraga Alpazar. And Eric delivering deadly kicks to the midsection. Those can absolutely break your ribs. Just trying to take the wind away from Cindy in the opening moments of this match. Trying to give himself the biggest advantage as this match goes into the several minute mark. Hip toss and a flashing elbow right across the throat. And again, punches, kicks, targeting the stomach, targeting the wind of Cinderella Princeler here. With wrist control, able to drag Alpazar to the mat, but really unable to capitalize as Alpazar catches Princeler too close to the ropes, and that one-two shot tags her. Tight snap suplex. Both competitors to their feet at nearly the same time. And Eric just too quick with those strikes. But this is the answer back that Cindy needs. That crossface hold locked in, but no, Alpazar able to escape and deliver a vicious series of shots, but a Shote pushes him off, but no, oh my god, deadly knee to the gut and going right back to it. This is the brutal efficiency that Alpazar is capable of, but a series of forearm smashes. Kick into the back, but Alpazar standing tall, but so is Cindy after another barrage of strikes. Hey, Eric Alpazar in prime position here, but unable to really seal the deal. Cindy just grabbing a hold at whatever she is able to at this moment to stay in this match. Right now, grabbing the head and neck, arms and shoulder. Alpazar barely able to break out of that hold. Mount tackle applied. And Kimura locked in. Alpazar, you could see him just 
holding space, preventing Cindy from getting to the ropes. And that is exactly what you need to do, and that is what makes him so very dangerous, so very effective. And Alcazar, not typically known for his submission holds, but whatever he can do to wear down, to slow down his opponents, he is absolutely interested in doing. Trying to give himself the greatest opportunity to win this match, but again, just desperation hold as that crossface is once again applied, but Alpazar reaching out for that bottom rope, able to get it. And the ring awareness of Kuraga Alpazar on display, but hold on, Triangle Lancer locked in. This time Alpazar is entirely too far. He's going to have to slip out or power out of this hold and looks yeah. like he gets a hold. Oh my God, Tornad kick going head to head with a soul, but neither able to make contact, but three strikes to the gut will put Cinderella right onto the mat, out on her feet and a low roundhouse, taking the legs right out from underneath the legs of the Princess of Blake's house. And hold on. Oh my God, absolutely devastating series of strikes. Cover two. And no, no, it's not enough. And right back to that Triangle Lancer. You can see Alpazar just reaching out with his left leg. Can't quite make it to the bottom rope, but refusing to be submitted. Series of strikes and again a soul butt kick, but Alpazar standing tall. Forearm smash answered back with a kick right to the ribs. And Insegiri throwback taking Alpazar down, but only for a moment as another series of strikes puts Cindy onto the mat, goes for the cover. Two that stop for good measure, but it's still not enough. And Alphazar just continuing to target the stomach, targeting the ribs. And hold on, big reverse choke slam. Alphazar possibly getting a little bit frustrated. You can see he's changing his strategy just a little bit. And Cindy having enough of those strikes, protecting herself, but not this time. As again, that absolutely deadly Brazilian kick shuts her down, but Alpazar, no, not going for the cover. And hold on, Impaler DDT, Cindy possibly looking for something big here, but no, Insegiri throwback right to the side of the head. And Impaler one more time. Will it hit? Probably not, but she can always repeat the spot as she goes up top. No, looking for that blockbuster, but Alpazar had it scouted and going right back to that mock kick to the side of the head. That has got to be it. Cover. Two, three, count, fall. And just the continued relentless assault, just targeting the stomach, targeting the chest, taking the wind away from Cindy in that match was absolutely critical, as well as wearing down the neck with those joint locks, just unable to protect herself from that mock kick time and time again. And that was the decider. Gotta say, you know, don't want to bury myself on commentary, but also, if you impaler DDT, call for the blockbuster, don't do it, and then impaler DDT and call for the blockbuster, um, that really does just sound like a breakdown in communication, um, like immediately after, too. Somebody blew a spot, and I am pretty sure it was Cindy. Um, as the person that programmed the AI for both of these characters, I know for a fact it was Cindy that blew the spot. <laughs> but, you know, maybe that is why she is not uh, 
not a top star. But let us go ahead and keep this show rolling here. the glasses don't really work on this uh, face model. But, uh, here we've got Zero Lopez, a man that has been calling out anybody and everybody with any sort of name recognition here in Blake's House Professional Wrestling. Just looking for his big break, looking for just that statement win that he feels like he needs. Well, you know, it's very dangerous to call people out because you never know who or what is going to be at the other end of the line. And tonight, that is Olivia Holloway, a competitor that has been just... Eternally a rival to Zero Lopez. The two of them have been on and off against one another since this program started over two years ago. And it looks like tonight is going to be no different. Zero Lopez, Olivia Holloway, and that match is right now. Lopez walking to the ring to the team of a two-time, two-time mystery champion. I believe a one-time trios champion here in Blake's House Professional Wrestling. And but on just a moment here. Olivia Holloway looking to shut down any possibility of success for Zero Lopez. Looking for that absolutely devastating 450 splash. Both of these competitors walking one another down and Holloway just right out the gate, lift and drop. Jawbreaker will connect. Zero Lopez, a Bit perplexing. He is somebody that, by all accounts, should be extraordinarily successful in Blake's House Wrestling. He's got all the tools to be a star. He can out wrestle the wrestlers, he can out fly the high flyers. He can keep up with the elite technicians. Hold on. Tombstone pile driver. No blocks. Reversed into a tombstone of his own. But. For whatever reason, success has eluded him. He's still looking for that statement victory that he feels like he needs to be a star here in this company. Olivia Holloway absolutely not interested. And being that sort of stepping stone as a knee bar is applied, trying to take away some of that agility. In any other circumstance, I would say advantage, but it's tough to say who is the more agile, who is the more athletic fighter between the two of these competitors. Rana applied here. And an elbow just crashing into the side of the face of Zero Lopez. Hold on, we are going into dangerous waters here. As, oh my god, Uranagi absolutely flattens Zero Lopez. And again, Holloway just full steam ahead, going high risk. And that Persona 450, but Zero Lopez rolling out of the way at the last possible moment as Holloway just collides with the canvas. Uh -oh. 
Bar locked in. Lopez trying to find footing here, but again, Tombstone pile driver. Lopez just dropped right on his neck, and a big boy senton center of the ring. Holloway playing with her food a little bit here. A dragon screw leg whip. What is she looking for next? Possibly looking for that 450 once again, but no, not yet. Continuing to target the legs of Zero Lopez. Continuing to just hold on. Going high risk here. And there it is. That could be it. Cover two. Oh my God. So close. And wild shot. Answer back with wild shot. But Holloway to her feet first. Fire into the corner turnbuckle. Zero Lopez in harm's way as a Yakuza kick drilling him in the corner. Zero just unable to get a foothold in this match and hold on to saw it here. Holloway, Harada, I don't think saw it. And Zero Lopez going for a cover, gets a count of one, testing the waters here. One, two. Both competitors just getting three. a moment to breathe. Zero going for that mount tackle will connect. Kimura hold applied and Zero changing tactics just a little bit. Looking to possibly out wrestle Holloway here. And that is precisely what makes Zero Lopez so very dangerous. The versatility in his offense. But right now he's just being denied the opportunity. Hold on. Desperation neckbreaker applied. Mount Tackle once again. No, rolling through, reversal cover. Two. Oh my God, so close. Turnbuckle smash is blocked and going for that Yakuza kick once again, but Zero now able to protect himself. Arm drag. And once, twice, three times with the leg lariat. Both competitors down on the mat. Zero finding a second win here. Back switch and blue thunder bomb cover two. And even that is not enough to put away Zero Lopez, Puerto Rican destroyer. Goes for the cover, but no, Holloway fingertips on the bottom rope. This match will continue. Oh my God. God, German suplex right into that turnbuckle pad. Hold on, Zero going high risk himself and absolutely monstrous elbow drop off the top. Destino will connect, but Holloway right back to her feet as if it never hit her. Blue Thunder Bomb, cover two. And no, no. It's still not enough, not enough, but this could be it. Cover, two, three, count, fall. Zero looking like a warrior even in defeat. Taking Holloway's best shot once, twice, three times, getting a shoulder off the mat, but that 450 proving to be just too much. So how you doing, Jamil? Appreciate you dropping in.
you have actually come in at a pretty good time. I'm trying to figure out, uh, let's see here. If I want to do the Battle Royal now or uh, after this tag team match. I think I might do the tag team match first just to give uh, potentially another opportunity for somebody to show up. I mean, sometimes in life you eat cake and ice cream. Well, you know, that is just the way it goes. So, I think that's allowed. Well, I think that's fine, honestly. But yeah, I think what I'm going to do here, I'm going to switch the order up a little bit and put the uh, Battle Royal on after this match. Oops, I scrolled too far. I mean, chilling, chilling is good. But yeah, coming up next, we have got the Sinners taking on Sarah and Yuri. And right now, that Blake's House Wrestling Tag Team Division still wide open. The Sinners quietly making their return just a couple weeks ago. But picking up a major victory against the Alpazars as a declaration of intent. They want a title opportunity for that Blake's House Wrestling Tag Team Championship. But right now, they are going to have to go through a red-hot Sarah and Yuri Tag Team. But the former Blake's House Wrestling Tag Team Champions almost certainly going to be up for that task. So let's go ahead and get into this match right now. Sinners making their way to the ring, and of course, it would be difficult to talk about this team without talking about Knicks Wrestling Organization. Their tag team division is so very effective, so very strategically in tune with tag team wrestling, and a big part of that has got to be the coaching of Nick Vidala. Of course, Wildcat Yuri and the young hero Sarah, absolutely the antithesis of strategy. Two of them very much interested in throwing themselves at their opponents, throwing their opponents around the ring, utilizing that speed and agility that they have been blessed with, but the Sinners more than capable of picking their opponents apart, neutralizing that agility, and that is precisely what you are seeing in the opening moments here. As James Sins taking on Sarah, you're going to be seeing a lot of joint locks. A series of thumbs to the eyes, and hold on, big chop to the throat. And Harada going to let them fight as he often does, utilizing that power advantage, utilizing that size advantage. But the young hero answering back with a leg feed insegiri of her own. So they got a series of shots and already just targeting the neck, targeting the back and Sarah going to her own corner here. Sandwich in Sagiri just targeting the neck themselves and... It's like the Wildcat giving the Sinners a taste of their own medicine. 
Hold on, STO and Suplex absolutely flattening the Wildcat in the center of the ring as Dean Sins now the legal man for this Knicks Wrestling Organization unit. And again, still has that power advantage, has that size advantage. Firing the Wildcat into the ropes, sliding through, no, escaping whatever it was, but only for the moment. Shot to the chest, answer back with an overhand right. Looks like Dean Sins getting the better end of the deal as he is standing tall and a kick to the lower abdomen. And Harada doesn't seem to think it was low. Double arm DET flattens. Yuri the Wildcat here, but able to get back to her own corner. Series of kicks to the chest. Hold on, rolling through cover, but no, not even a count of one. As a forearm smash will collide. Thumb to the eyes, answered back with another forearm smash. And picture perfect spine buster, but young hero rolling through as if it never hit her. Lift and drop, and it looks like Sarah not finished, but making a, again, a bit of a tactical error as James sends the legal man for this team. Pushing off, able to escape the pressure, and just a series of closed fists, just wild shots to the side of the head. As the young hero Sarah on a roll, both teams bringing a fresh competitor into this match. As again, combination STO and suplex hold will lay the young hero out. Elbow to the back of the head and just a deadly series of strikes. Never been said the centers don't play rough. That is absolutely in their wheelhouse. Wildcat looking to rise the occasion, rolling through, but fingertips on the bottom rope as Ushigaroshi targeting the neck once again. And devastating sit out Lariat off the top rope. That could be it for this team right here, but no, Dean Sins does not seem to think so. And he is met with a series of wild strikes from the Wildcat, and now knee bar applied. Both teams staying on the apron, at least for the moment. Respecting the sanctity of this tag team contest. As once again, continuing to target the knees. Here's the Wildcat Yuri. Series of kicks to the gut. A hip throw bringing Sarah down to the mat and again continuing to target the legs, but this is going to bring the Wildcat back out of her own corner and a deadly roundhouse kick. Answer back to boot square in the jaw. And right now, hold on, cartwheel and elbow smash. She's not finished, but Jameson's yeah. fighting for his life, trying to escape the corner. Yeah. Speaking of escaping the corner, this is somewhat uncharacteristic. Hold on, cravat hold locked in. These mixed wrestling teams typically very effective at cutting off the ring, but looks like this on this one here, mount tackle applied, but turnabout is fair play. Triangle choke locked in. Looks like this Yuri and Sarah team has gotten the sinners off their main game plan. Drop kick attempted, but not quite able to find its mark. And 
right now the Wildcat in harm's way in the center of the ring is that Dragon Sleeper. Just so much leverage applied to the neck and back. Trying to escape to her own corner and she is able to do so. And another sandwich in Sagiri just flattens Dean Sins. Colossal wheel kick right to the back of the head, unable to protect himself, but brings the arm and brings her back into the center of the ring. And this is that center style, that Nick's wrestling organization style, trying to keep the fight as far away. Oh my God, absolutely deadly super kick. And this is what the sinners do so very effectively. Finally able to get back onto their main page, able to get back, hold on, double arm bar locked in. Dean Sins able to make a critical save. As, oh my God, vicious series of strikes. Once, twice, right into the face, and here comes the Wildcat as a sliding drop kick puts Boots to the face. Once, twice, three times, once again. Hold on, Shining. Wizard right into the jaw, that knee strikes. Now the Wildcat on fire. Cross arm breaker locked in, but no. Knee bar is the answer back. And right now Harada just losing control of this match. Both the centers in, but... Again, right back to that Northern Light Suplex cross arm breaker combination. Sandwich Insigiri setting up this unit. The Wildcat going high risk and a huge frog splash off the top, crushing the back of Dean Sins. Both competitors getting a fresh man in this match. Step up Insigiri. Sarah in control, but hold on. Big Rana bringing this back into her own corner. Milan choke hold applied. Some illegal leverage. Harada is giving them until the count of five. That won't be necessary as the Wildcat able to make a critical save. Knee bar locked in and Yuri just a few moments too late to make the save. is picking up a hard-fought victory in that match. Again, both of these teams very much contenders for that Blake's House Wrestling Tag Team Championship. The center is making a statement win tonight. Taking on another one of those front runners for that title and coming out victorious. That title picture yet to fully crystallize, but the centers, after their return, have very nearly jumped to the front of the line. With more matches like that, it would be easy to see why and very easy to imagine gold once again around their waist. But let's go ahead and keep this show rolling here. As uh, coming up next, Battle Royal to determine 
who is going to face Maglo in tonight's semi main event? Of course, longtime Blake's House wrestling fans know exactly how this works. There will be eight competitors entering an over the top rope battle royal, the winner of which gets an opportunity to take on the People's Champion later on this evening. So let us go ahead and swing over to that and start figuring out exactly who is going to be competing in that battle royal. And there are two names I am going to call myself, uh, although anybody viewing in the audience more than welcome to call out some names as well. Let us see here. My stables are a little bit wacky uh, in hindsight. Also, huh? It is entirely plausible. I do not have Dave the Animal Batista, which is bizarre. Because I would have bet money that he was in WWE 2010s. Also, it is very funny looking at this roster and seeing that. Just how many of these people don't work for this company anymore? We did just see him yesterday, which is why I was going to put him in this uh, match. But it does appear as though I do not have Dave the Animal Batista. Uh, let me just roll through it one more time and make sure. I would be very surprised if someone has not already made uh, the Man with the Iron Fist. But yeah, no, it looks like... Oh, wait, here's Batista. That looks like, uh, what is it, early uh, Evolution Batista, if I had to guess. I do feel like we do have to have uh, CM Punk. Um, and you know what, if we're going to, in the interest of being thorough... Let us see here. We did, I mean, we did watch three whole ass movies uh, this weekend. Honestly, you'd think, uh, me being a mark for the gays, uh, I would have a uh, Harleen Quinzel on my roster. Uh, but I do not. That's true, it ain't too late to start. Like, there are probably hundreds of thousands of uploads on the Steam Workshop that I could very easily get. Uh, it is, in fact, too late to start if you mean tonight. Uh, because I need, I need to reset the game to import a character. And I am going to not do that. Yeah, let us see what our options are in the uh, TVs and movie space. Uh, and in the real people space, for that matter. her on one of these before but since we're in a martial arts movie zone I think Cynthia Rothrock is a pretty safe pick I think she's a shooter in this game
But, you know, these over battle royals are extraordinarily unpredictable. Uh, let's see. And to connect other threads here. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see here. Could put the Brooklyn Brawler in, considering we do want people from Brooklyn to be in more things. People like uh, Meowth and Joey Wheeler and Molly from Sailor Moon. People from Brooklyn uh, should just be in more stuff, I think. You know what, I bet you all of those characters already exist on the workshop and could just make them a trios team. I might do that later. But, uh... Currently I am monopolizing the, uh... The choices for characters on here. Uh, the thing that is meant to be the audience participation segment. Uh, let's see what options I've got here. Oh yeah, I see. I think, do I even have a Hydern? I don't think I do. I don't have an Ash either, now that I'm thinking about it. Big Shunai. Which I don't hate. Yeah, I think I will do Shunai. I actually don't think I've had him on a uh, Blake's House Wrestling yet. So really, I think we're just connecting all the dots from this weekend uh, with the roster we've got so far. But uh, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to run to the restroom real quick. But if uh, you want to suggest some other names, you are welcome to do so. And I have always uh, been able to do so. Yeah, he does. Uh, I'll be right back. Uh, I have several versions of... I've got at least two versions of Macho Man. Three if you count um, Bonesaw. Uh, I do not have Space Ghost, unfortunately. Uh, so I guess my question to you is... Uh, 80s Macho Man, 90s Macho Man, or um, Bonesaw from the film Spider-Man? Nineties Macho Man, I can make that happen, and Abby, I appreciate you dropping in. Uh, let us see here. Uh, let's see here. I don't think I do, and huh, do I not have NWO Savage? Um. That's very... Oh, no, I, I'm a fool. I had him the whole time. Uh, I don't have any version of Venom. Hmm. 
Hmm. Let's see this boy I got. I'm trying to think. I think a witch wrestler. Uh, I do not. I am also afraid I do not. Uh, although, you know what? Uh, what I do have um, is the Ace of New Japan, Hiroshi Tanahashi. But if that's not specifically what you are uh, looking for, all right. I do like that gear a lot. Yeah, Tanahashi has fantastic tits. Um, so, yeah, it looks like our lineup is set here. So, any one of these eight competitors has a chance to face Maglo in tonight's semi-main event. And that match, it's right now. And already in the opening moments of this contest, it is absolute chaos as Randy Savage, hold on, Cynthia Rothrock eliminated less than 30 seconds into the match. And just like that, we are down to seven and that is exactly the sort of chaos that you can see in these over the top rope battle royals. You do not need to be pinned. You do not need to be submitted. You just need to be in the wrong place at the wrong time, and that is precisely what happened to Cynthia Rock Rock. CM Punk dropping Cena right on his back. It's, you know, just slugging it out. Right into the corner turnbuckle as Savage once again. It looks like he has got a bone to pick with the ace of New Japan Professional Wrestling as he has been targeting him since the outset of this contest. Rushing Sandwich Lariat as the Brooklyn Brawler and Savage just collide around Tanahashi. And those vicious elbows of Savage dropping a bomb onto Cena. As CM Punk now slugging it out with Tanahashi. Changing dance partners. Here comes Shune. As well as Dave the Animal Batista hanging. Chokehold locked in. And that flash elimination looks like all seven of the remaining competitors in the ring just a little bit more careful, a little bit more aware, trying to protect themselves in this match. And you absolutely have got to be. Brooklyn Blarler swinging for the fences on Savage. Lift and drop. Savage grabbing a hold of that top rope, able to protect himself as a big double suplex will lay him out. CM Punk fist drop onto Dave the Animal Batista. Amazing display of power from Batista and CM Punk looking to test the waters here as that chokehold locked in. You've got until the referee's count of five and Savage very nearly getting himself eliminated. And hold on, Batista sent to the outside. But hold on just a moment here. Fireman's carry Buster. Adjusting attitudes of, oh my God, Brawler pulling Tanahashi out of the way. Cena colliding with the canvas on that elbow drop attempt. Shune going high risk, but thinking better of it. Just a little bit too much chaos in his corner of the ring. And oh my God, positively Deadly strike to the back of the head, laying out Brawler, and you can see how much that took out of him as CM Punk adds the exclamation mark with that neckbreaker. But Brawler trying to fight his way out of this situation as Tanahashi, hold on to someone here. Styles clash from Tanahashi, cover two, Brawler eliminated. Picture perfect, Insigiri goes for the roll-up, but no. 
Shune, those hands on the bottom rope. I do wonder if those telekinetic appendages are legal in this contest. Big Manhattan drop from Savage as an elbow again, dropping a bomb on the crown of Cena, but Cena, man that never gives up, never quits, but another series of strikes. Shune trying to get back into this match. And just the star power in the ring right now, absolutely tremendous as a picture Perfect dragon screw leg whip from Tanahashi. And just those palm strikes of Tanahashi is absolutely tremendous as he continues to grind away at the legs of his opponents. And you can see exactly to what end. Both legs tied up, just applying pressure to the knees, the back, but Punk will not be submitted. Number two, only gets two. Punk fired into the ropes. Cena just driving shoulders right into the stomach. Big DDT is Savage and Tanahashi once again tying up all alone. Twist and shout, but Savage to his feet first and again right back to that chokehold. Testing the referee's patience as that sit-out face buster plants Punk. Rolls through cover, but no. Fingertips on the bottom rope. Drop, but nobody really able to get a foothold in this match. There's just too much chaos, but a precision haymaker flattens Punk. Manhattan drop laying Punk out, and again, Savage going right back to Tanahashi. Absolutely devastating dropkick as Punk flattens Shune. Cena going up top and a colossal diving elbow, but he is not finished yet. Shune rolling out of the way. Shune turnabout is fair play as a guillotine right across the neck of John Cena. Lift and drop. Savage planted on the mat. Punk trying to capitalize, but Tanahashi getting, trying to cut in. And once again, Tanahashi and Savage just going head to head as Cena dragging Punk down to the mat. Devastating series of strikes, but Savage catching Shune back of the head unprotected. Man known as the best in the world throwing a devastating series of strikes. Hold on, that was... Savage is eliminated. We are down to our final four. Fireman's carry Buster. Is that it for the ace? No. No, it is not. A double suplex and Shune just grabbing a hold of that top rope, staying in this match. Out attempted from Tanahashi, but too much chaos as a series of knees levels John Cena. Goes for the cover. Two. And no, it is not quite enough to put away Hiroshi Tanahashi. Shune fighting for his life. It is absolute terrors in the ring. Shune a bit of an up and comer. This is the opportunity of his life. Taking on the best in the world, taking on the ace of New Japan, taking on big match John Cena.
All for an opportunity. High fly flow. That's got to be it for Punk. And it is. CM Punk is eliminated. Kick right to the knee. Shune. Just in such tremendous harm's way here. He is swimming with sharks. The ace of New Japan, the ace of World Wrestling Entertainment. AA flattens Shune, but Tanahashi, oh my God, Michinoku Driver planting Cena right on his neck. Release German suplex, and it is absolute pandemonium in the ring. Cena picks the leg, going up top. But not electing to be made a fool of twice. Hold on, goes for the dive, but no, Shune pulling Tanahashi out from under him once again. Cena goes for the cover, two. Only gets two. See Tanahashi looking for high fly flow and it connects. That could be it. No. Shune looking for the elimination. Oh my God. Absolutely devastating reverse DDT. It is just chaos around the ring as Shune just lighting up Tanahashi with sledgehammer like shots. Cover two. Twist and shout once again. Shune going up top, but no, thinks better of it. Series of knees to the jaw, but not enough to keep Cena down. Dragon suplex cover two. Is that it for John Cena? It is the ace of New Japan has bested the ace of World Wrestling Entertainment. Sling Blade, Vintage Tanahashi, cover, two, three, count, fall. As Go Ace plays Hiroshi Tanahashi going to the semi-main event to face Maglo. Yeah, uh, I mean, really, you know, if we were grading who has the best hits in this match. It is Hiroshi Tanahashi. Got a sip of water real quick. Those battle royals are fun to call. Let's see here. Yeah, um, they're big is the thing. Um, those matches are fun to call, but also like kind of challenging because there's just so much happening. <laughs> uh, yeah. Also, God bless 2021 uh, and people just being excited about Busty Boys. It's rad, actually. But, uh... Let us uh, keep this show rolling here. David picking up. Honestly, yeah. Also, shout out to trans guys doing it. Like, doing it and doing it well. <laughs> yeah.
the thought had crossed my mind of uh, getting an alt is <laughs> what I am, or an alt Sona, I suppose, is what I would respond to that statement. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and keep this show rolling here. David picking up a major victory last week, kind of coming out of nowhere. Just, again, not really committed to any of the major singles divisions, not committed to the tag team division. He is absolutely a free agent. Just running roughshod over anyone he wants to stand in front of and... Looks like tonight he is going head-to-head -head with Blake Havis, a man that looking to strike out on his own. A man that is trying to rediscover exactly where he fits into Blake's house professional wrestling. And what better opponent for him than the man that doesn't really fit in anywhere. As uh, Blake taking on David one-on-one. -on -one. And that match is right now. Picking up a victory just a couple weeks ago over Cinderella Prinsler, and that was really his first match back in quite some time. But that enigmatic style, that extraordinarily versatile offense showing no rust, and that is going to be a challenge for the man with the money, Blake Havis. Those strikes of his are going to be put to the test as well as his ability to just withstand that vicious assault of David Clement. Blake, the man with the arrogant swagger, bringing that very swagger to the ring. And low blow early, Harada going to let them fight as he often does. Series of chops to the chest. Both men jockeying for position, neither really able to gain the upper hand. Similar size, similar strength. It's all going to come down to leverage, and neither of them quite able to get that mount blocked. But David able to slip out. Again, the versatility of David on display. Able to change tactics fairly quickly when he needs to, but a European uppercut will drop him to the mat all the same. David, just a living embodiment of when you thought you had all the answers. He changes the questions, but right now, Blake being tested. Thumb to the eye, protected by those sunglasses, but for how long? Chinlock apply, but Blake able to slip out of the hold. Again, chop to the chest, but it doesn't even seem to phase David as... A shot to the gut will be the answer back. Blake scrambling to his feet, not allowing David to get back and continue that pressure. Mount blocked once again, and again, David just has the answer. Just a half step ahead of Blake, at least for the moment. Hold on, figure four locked in and applying some extra leverage. David in harm's way, but able to slip out of the hold. Thumb to the eyes, turnabout is fair play after all as kicks to the ribs being answered back with chops to the chest, but step over toe hold face lock from David is going to be the answer back here. Blake trapped in this hold, able to slip out. Chops back and forth, neither competitor able to gain the upper hand, but a Mongolian chop across the collarbones is going to flatten Blake, but both of them just standing tall. Blow after blow. Hold on. Tarantula locked in. Five minutes gone. On rolling through. Blake able to get a hand on the bottom rope. Vince and Gary will connect. And we talk a lot about the striking ability of Blake, but 
David has some deadly feet of his own as he's demonstrating time and time again. Kick to the gut, following up with that Insigiri, flattening Blake over and over and over. But flying forearm smash and going right back to targeting those legs, trying to take away some of that striking ability of David Clement. Sunset flip, power bomb goes for the cover. One, two, only gets two. And Blake answering back with himself, Insigiri of his own. And David getting himself fired up. Just serving a reminder exactly what he is capable of as he delivers a big boy senton right over the back of Blake Cavus. Testing David with another cover two, only gets two. Sigiri once again, and David going high risk, very unusual, but buries a pair of boots into the lower back of Blake. Picture perfect drop kick, connecting square in the chest. David finally able to get that mount tackle he's been looking for all match, and he is utilizing it to just deliver punishment with those right hands. But hold on just a moment here. Pair of knees buried into the stomach of David Clement. Blake turning things around, and a devastating reverse DDT. Still not yet finished. Blake fired into that corner turnbuckle. Hold on. David just pulling out maneuvers we have never seen before. This is a newer, hungrier David, but a monstrous frog splash. Unable to get a count, failed to hook the leg, and David was able to get a foot on that bottom rope. And once again, a pair of knees buried into the stomach of David Clement. But David trying to get to his feet, still on wobbly legs, and Blake planting him back onto the mat. Both of these men just going for it all, leaving nothing to chance here. Picture perfect Manhattan drop center of the ring and even just grinding away at the face of Blake and hold on to someone here. Pop up, power bomb, levels him. That has got to be it. Goes for the cover, two. Three, count, fall. And Blake, wherever your journey takes you in Blake's house professional wrestling, David is here to block your U-Haul. Exactly what it is David is after still to be determined yeah Moving sucks, uh, I do gotta say. Oh, let us see here. But just a couple matches left on tonight's program as we are coming once again to that King of Fighters television championship that Team Daytona has held with a vice-like grip for the last several weeks. Picking up win after win. But looks like JB3 has had enough of that and is sending in a team of stars to bring that championship back to Judgment Professional Wrestling. here. As 
JJ Mondo and the Perlman brothers. Just some of the brightest stars in Judgment Professional Wrestling earning themselves an opportunity at the gold, going head to head with a Team Daytona that has looked positively unstoppable in recent weeks. Of course, the Perlman brothers extraordinarily decorated as a tag team, holding both the Blake's House Wrestling title and the Chop Shop tag team title. This would be their first ever run with the Trios Championship if they were to pick up a win tonight. And JJ Mondo, of course, no less decorated himself. JJ Mondo, the first ever Judgment Professional Wrestling Heavyweight Champion. A man that is consistently at the top of the card, as well as a fan favorite here at Blake's House Professional Wrestling. Team Daytona have got their work cut out for them. And we'll have to see if they are able to rise to the challenge right now. AB3 just picking just such an arduous task for this Blake's House Wrestling unit to take on. But every one of these men have proven they are capable of picking up falls. The pure wrestling ability of Drew Serpa. The athletic striking offense of Kowalski and those technical pins and submissions of Antonio. Bring it. All extraordinarily dangerous and Antonio calling out the opposition. And it looks like he's going to be starting things off against JJ Mondo. Those men taking their time here and you cannot afford to overextend in one of these matches. These trios contests, especially elimination tag team, they can go on for 30, 40, 50 minutes. You need to be extremely strategic about how you utilize your energy, how you utilize just those holds that you've been waiting to deliver. Right now, it looks like Antonio trying to keep the position on his side of the ring, but JJ just proving to be a little bit too difficult to handle. Looks like Antonio switching things up. It's going to be difficult to match JJ Mondo with power, but with leverage and technique, Drew has out-wrestled competitors substantially larger than himself, and that appears to be the strategy here. But right now, just that power advantage proving to be a little bit too much. As Josh Perlman, now the legal man, roll up. No, not even a count of one. It's going to take more than that to keep Perlman shoulders on the mat. Fireman's carry, and again, Serpa just sticking to that traditional wrestling background. That open palm strike is trying to measure space, but... That is not something they teach you in a wrestling gym. As that Rana just devastates Drew Serpa, but here comes the high flyer, the daredevil that is Ryan Perlman. And it looks like Team Daytona looking to match athleticism with athleticism because the answer back is Steve Kowalski. Big soul butt kick. Arm drag and a knee drop right to the jaw. As both these men just going to be keeping that accelerator pinned to the floorboard as the two of them are in the ring. But hold on just a moment here. Arm lock applied. Kowalski. Certainly not the style of offense we would expect from him, but as a team that has been champion for two months now, got to change it up a little bit, and that might be the strategy here. A 
on lift and drop. And now Serpa set up here. He's trying to wear his opponent down, utilizing that shin lock. And here is the answer back. Roll through and grabs a hold of his own. It's JJ Mondo. Hold on, mount applied. Deadlift, suplex, and that is precisely what I mean. Neutralizing the size advantage, neutralizing the power advantage with leverage and technique. And that is precisely what Drew Serpa is known for. Big chop to the chest, series of forearm smashes, and a lariat for good measure. But no, Perlman is not done. Josh Perlman, no. Rolling through, goes for the cover, one. Only gets one. Lift and drop. Big DDT from Kowalski. Kowalski just trying to keep up that pressure, keep up that momentum that Team Daytona has built over the last several moments, but Huge sit-out Lariat is the answer back. Josh Perlman looking for that sure-killing blow, that Feral Spear that has won him championship after championship. But hold on, a just a deadly series of strikes just stomps to the gut and chest, but not enough to keep Perlman on the mat. Double drop kick, picture-perfect tag team offense from the Perlman brothers, but that patented wheel kick from Antonio is going to shut that down, but he is not done. Dialing long distance with a boot right to the side of the head. Sunset flip, power bomb, driving the back of Ryan Perlman's head into the canvas. Knee drop is the answer. Antonio fighting his way out of the situation. Picture perfect arm drag, both men down. Antonio to his feet first, Perlman not too far behind. And here comes a rejuvenated JJ Mondo. And there is that signature neck breaker of his. Antonio dazed, but only for a moment. And Antonio adding injury to insult, just calling the referee over right in the face of the Perlman brothers. And just amazing display of agility from Kowalski staying on his feet, but oh my God, unable to do so there. Belly to belly overhead suplex, launching him to the mat. And once again, both aprons clearing out now. Patented Perlman brothers double drop kick. Kowalski trapped. AJ Mondo fighting off Team Daytona on his own, just showing exactly how gifted, how elite a competitor he is. But hold on just a moment here. Light 2 brought into the contest. Kowalski getting extracurricular in this match. Ready, go. And oh my god, that panted gotcha hold from JJ. He is having absolutely none of Kowalski's shenanigans. And that is going to send him back to his own corner. Just the abuse on the outside, followed by that gotcha hold from JJ. He's going to need to take a moment to rest, but Antonio possibly looking for willpower, but no, that is denied. Twisting Rana cover. One, but only gets one. Twisting neckbreaker Kowalski just flattened. Perfect arm drag and Antonio going high risk and an absolutely gorgeous frog splash, but no. High and low, JJ in the unblockable. DDT plants Antonio. Trying to get back to his own corner. And that kick to the gut. After all the abuse Antonio's taken over the course of this match, that is enough to put him down. Cover two, but only gets two. 15 minutes into this contest, still no eliminations. 
Josh Perlman goes for the cover of his own, only gets one. Back switch, but no. Arm drag, he get himself out of harm's way, and a leg drop draped across the throat. And again, Drew just measuring his distance with that open palm strike. He was so very surgical with that maneuver, but right now, Josh Perlman just proving to be out of arm's reach and a basement drop kick taking the legs out from underneath the legs of Drew and allowing him the time to get back to his own corner as a double power bomb levels Drew Serpa and once again power is in the ring for Judgment Professional Wrestling. Mount applied but reversal of fortune as that hammer lock locked in but not enough to keep him down. Pushing Drew off. Again, just power out maneuvering technique, at least in the moment. Crossface locked in. Harada going to let it happen. Signaling Drew to go back to his own corner as JJ takes on Antonio. Legal competitor in this contest for Team Daytona. JJ going back to his own corner. Here comes a fresh Josh Perlman. Kick to the gut. Mount tackle applied. Rolls through. Reversal cover. Two. And gets a count of two as a series of knees to the crown as a parting shot from Team Daytona. Basement drop kick once again. And this could be it. No. Rana driving him into the corner, possibly looking for some post offense, but unable to get it. As once again, both aprons clearing out. Double power bomb crushing through. Rolls through, cover again. One, two, and gets a count of two. The indecision of Kowalski very nearly costing his team an elimination. Lift and drop, center of the ring. Ryan Perlman in excellent position. Capo kick, just boot colliding with the jaw of Antonio. Looking for one more, but hold on. Shiranui crushes him. But the Perlman brothers just too slick. Able to escape that precarious situation, but... Josh Perlman absolutely devastated. One more time, rolls through, cover, but only gets one high and low. A Perlman in the unblockable springboard senton. He is not done yet. 450 splash, and that's gonna clear out both aprons again. Twisting neck breaker. But Ryan Perlman Taking a minute to breathe, getting to his own corner, and so is Drew Serpa. Two fresh competitors in this match. Oh my god. It looks like Antonio may have bumped that top turnbuckle as JJ Mondo just colliding with canvas. Hold on. Oh my god. Stacked up with that monstrous power bomb. And both teams just at war with one another right now. And hold on. Kowalski got your hold applied to JJ Mondo. And JJ busted open. This is his moment. Red impact and sliding drop kick. That could be it. Rolls through cover. Two. Picture perfect Pele kick. Steve Kowalski in control in a major way, but juked by JJ, able to escape to his own corner. That's gonna buy his team another moment. Springboard senton one more time. But once it's not good enough. Roman trying to get himself fired up, get his team fired up, get the crowd fired up, but Kowalski able to escape back to his own corner. And oh my God, Antonio with that patented wheel kick. 
Milan rolls through, has the arm trapped, neck as well, but no. Josh Perlman able to make the save in a critical moment. Antonio trapped in the tree of woe, just a series of strikes. A double drop kick, and now a rejuvenated JJ taking on Antonio, but Antonio able to escape the pressure. And he has had enough of JJ, had enough of this match. Trying to exercise him with that soul butt kick. Ready, go. And once again, got your hold locked in, but Drew able to make the save. That was surely going to be it. You can't survive that abuse for very long. Devastating brain buster goes for the cover, but a foot on the bottom rope will continue this match at three on three. Patented JJ Mondo neckbreaker. Drew sent to the outside. And it looks like this time it's the Perlman brothers getting extracurricular with that Singapore cane. Drew just brutalized with a series of wild shots, still out on his feet. A double drop kick levels him. And that patented catatonic bomb, that could be it right there. Goes for the cover, one, but no. Too close to that orange Gatorade corner. And that is going to be a major difference maker right there as Antonio tying up. Josh Perlman, hold on. Oh my God, picture perfect moonsault. And that is going to, oh my God. Antonio patented wheel kick. He is not done looking for it all. Will power will connect. And Antonio tying up the neck, tying up the arm. And that's going to be the first elimination for Team Daytona. And this team that has been on an absolute tear, looking to extend that winning streak one more week. And they are two falls away from doing it. Belly to belly overhead suplex. JJ flattening Antonio. Not done yet. Full head of steam and drags him down to the mat. Do not adjust your set. Back to back Bulldogs and an elbow smashing right into the face. Going for that devastating back fist, but. Antonio able to escape, double drop kick, and Kowalski now in the driver's seat. Springboard, Tornad kick, and Kowalski looking like an absolute machine. Going high risk here. And jumping short off the top. Roaring Lariat will connect, and a wheel kick is your answer back. Kowalski looking to shut this team down. Ripcord, but no, able to slip out before that roundhouse kick could connect. And that is a major difference maker here. Oh my god, colossal miscommunication. That could cost them. Shining Axe kick. Kowalski escaping back to his own corner. Here comes Drew once again. Pele kick crushing the skull of Josh Perlman, but Perlman undeterred. His brother, his partner at ringside. Oh my God, Drew trying to drive a shoulder right through the heart. Unable to make contact and almost certainly Josh Perlman going to take that personally. He's looking for that feral spear of his own, but not just yet as we are going into dangerous waters here. Oh my God, Frankensteiner off the top and Drew trapped. That is going to be elim elimination. 
or Team Judgment Professional Wrestling. We are down to two on two. Monstrous backfist. JJ Mondo finding his second win somewhere. Sunset flip power bomb, driving the back of the head into the canvas. And Antonio distracted, going to be eliminated. Kowalski's got to do it all by himself, but this could spell certain doom for Team Daytona as JJ Mondo just an absolute machine. The man with the metal arms picking up back-to-back -back eliminations. As the trio's championship, the King of Fighters television championship, changing hands in the favor of Judgment Professional Wrestling. Someone here. We have got just a couple more matches left for y'all tonight, folks. Of course, I mentioned at the top of the show the meteoric rise of Christopher Warzal, and it looks like he has called out Nick's Wrestling Organization champion Brad Chad and Brad Chad denying him a match this evening, but taking a match with Christine Warzala, his wife, Christopher Warzala, of course, going to be at ringside. You know that Warzala wants to be in the ring tonight. Well, this could be a blessing in disguise, of course. Just under a month ago, it was Colby that just took the head off the neck of Josh Kaiser just before Satchwell and Kaiser singles competition. Brad Chad's evasiveness could cost him, although it is difficult to imagine that is going to be the case. With the elite tactician that is Brad Chad, the man that makes sure every fight is exactly when, where, and how he wants it. If he doesn't want Warzala tonight, there has got to be a reason. Whatever the case may be, Christine Warzala, Brad Chad, and that match, it's right now. Chad, the Knicks Wrestlerization Heavyweight Champion. A man that is not too far away from defending that title. But right now, that is not what is on his mind. What's got to be on his mind is dismantling the competitor standing across from him. going to deliver a moral blow to his prospective challenger. Again, Brad Chad, an individual that has every fight on his own terms, and that has got to be the angle that he is looking for here. Picks the leg, and we are going to see in this contest, it is going to be just classic brawling style going head-to-head, -head, which is raw wrestling technique. Elbows, close fists. Gonna be answered back, spinning toe hold. And just that short couple of moments, just a microcosm that is going to give context for a much greater match. Hold on, blazing tornado as Brad Chad just pulling out all the stops in the opening moments of this match. And let it be known. He is not the type to underestimate his opponents. So you can see 
He is taking this match exactly as seriously as any challenger he has ever had. You can see again, Warzala at ringside. He very badly wants to be in the ring tonight. But right now, Christine's tied up in this hold, but able to slip out. And it's Christine standing tall right now. Mount applied and giant swing. Brad Chad currently putting on a clinic. That man calls himself the best in the world, and he's got the gold around his waist to prove it, but Christine Iron Claw right to the head, just crushing the temples, crushing the skull of her opponent. And again, it is Christine standing tall right now. Come on, deadlift, German suplex, picture perfect form from the man known as the best in the world. Big head button, Christine going high risk. And a falling fist, X marks the spot square in the stomach. And it looks like the technician finding himself in the receiving end of a submission hold. Chad just making his position very clear. That statement that he is the best. It's both his opponent, but it is also to his perspective challenger on the apron. But headbutt once, twice, three times from Christine. Big headbutt slipping that precision haymaker, and that is so critical. You cannot let your opponent deliver a strike like that, it can take you out of the match immediately. What? Hold on, Brad Chad rolling through. And just tossing Christine down to the mat. And just sticking with those fundamental holds, those holds that he knows are effective. Rolling through once again, cover one, but only one. And a flashing elbow right to the jaw of Christine. Roll up, cover, one. No, only gets one. And close fits meets European style uppercut. And this is the kind of fight that Christine wants to be in. She will slug it out with anybody. What? Right now, it looks like Brad Chad just a full step ahead of Christine over the course of this match. Firing her into the ropes. But Christine able to slip the lariat, but another flashy cover, but still not enough to keep Christine on the mat. And using Brad Chad's sense of self-preservation against him, she saw he slipped that haymaker earlier in the match. Fainting and delivering a low blow, and again, Harada going to let these two fight. Lupez press and series of punches are applied. What? Ratchat again just continuing to apply them strain to the shoulders there. Oh my god, twisting Uranagi, and he is going up top. Cross body off the top rope. Look out below, but hold on. Smith Especial rolls through cover. Two, three, count, fall. And Brad Tad just so very dangerous. It felt like he was a full step ahead the entire match. Again, Warzala, all he could do from the apron is watch. He is the one that wants to be in the ring, but Brad Chad would not give him the singles match tonight. But whatever the case may be, Brad Chad victorious, proving why he is the next wrestling organization heavyweight champion. Uh, let's go ahead and keep this show rolling here.
felt like my game stuttered like on my end there. Unclear if that was a little wacky on your side. I know I've been having weird connectivity issues with Twitch. Uh, hopefully the stream's been running okay. Uh, who could say, really? Hold on, let me grab another sip of water. But we have got just two more matches for y'all this evening. And coming up next, we now know exactly who is going to be facing the People's Champion, Maglo. And that is none other than the ace of New Japan Professional Wrestling, Hiroshi Tanahashi. Winning the Open Challenge Battle Royal against an absolutely stacked roster of competitors. But they call him the ace for a reason. As he is going to be going head-to-head -head with Maglo in that match. It's right now. Getting himself fired up, making his way to the ring. He knows exactly how big of a match this is, how big of an opponent this is. Of course, this is not his first match against an elite competition from New Japan Professional Wrestling. Course, he took on the man that can make it rain money, Kazuchika Okada. Just a few months ago, this is an opportunity to right a wrong against all those...